Asbestos is a known carcinogen, and there's no safe level of exposure. Mesothelioma is a miserable disease. They must fight a truly global battle. We want to demonstrate our enormous respect. Keep up the good work. I look forward to the day when ADAO is no longer needed. Fix it. Fix it. Everything in the world can be fixed. Keep me in your heart for a while. Clearly, as you look at uh, the program, as you look around the room, as you look uh, at who are here, uh, we are really honored this year to have uh, folks, I believe it's from nine countries visiting us, from the UK, from Brazil, from Italy, from Australia and elsewhere. Uh, this meeting, which uh, uh, keeps growing and having its impact, uh, has been uh, growing in its importance. Uh, our next presentation will be uh, from Tony Rich, who's going to share some photographic thoughts about asbestos. Good morning. It is truly an honor to be participating in the eighth annual ADO conference, and I want to thank Linda Reinstein and ADO for inviting me here today. Thank you. Although I've supported ADO for a number of years, this is the first conference that I've attended in person, but I feel as though I've attended past ADO conferences virtually on ADO's website through many video archives. They are excellent resources and encourage everyone to, to visit the site. My name is Tony Rich and I'm an industrial hygienist working in the field of consulting for the last 18 years and have specialized in areas of regulatory compliance regarding asbestos issues, primarily through conducting asbestos project management, asbestos training, asbestos abatement monitoring, and asbestos inspections. During that time, I found that there is a critical need for increasing asbestos awareness and that there are few good resources that provide quality information. For example, most people that I've met don't know that in the U.S., as Linda has stated earlier, asbestos is still a legal ingredient in many products and that asbestos has not yet been completely banned or people don't know that asbestos is still being in mind and exported in several countries today. In an effort to learn more and share knowledge about the subject of asbestos, over the past few years I've acquired a, lot, a large collection of asbestos-related artifacts, books, documents, photographs, and other materials for educational purposes. ADO has asked me to, if I could present a selection of photographs from this collection today. Although there are literally thousands of images to choose from, each equally as important as the next in conveying a message towards asbestos awareness, a small sampling of pictures were selected mostly based upon general feedback from folks who have previously viewed them. If interested to see the rest of the image collection, there is a website I believe Linda has indicated ADO may offer a link upon request from ADO's website. Please contact ADO. After all, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then these images all together speak, will speak volumes. To begin, sorry, where else than in Asbestos Quebec, as Linda had mentioned earlier, we, we visited. This is an image, this image is a panorama of the Jeffrey Mine, or JM Mine, an infamous open pit asbestos mine formerly known as the Johns Manville Mine, who operated this, this mine site since the late 1800s until more recent times, and is currently owned by a private Indian company who is seeking additional funding to continue mining asbestos. This photo shows the entire the entire mine and portions of the nearby asbestos mill facilities. I visited the asbestos mining region with a group of asbestos experts and professionals, some of whom are here in the audience today and can attest this pit is incredibly enormous. The next image depicts the mine with a magnifying magnified portion showing a large industrial vehicle on one of the mine bench roads deep within. 
for scale, which looks like a small toy. Signage posted in a small park behind the observation deck from where this picture was taken touts several trivial facts about the mine, that it's roughly two kilometers across. That's about 1.2 miles. The adjacent town had to be moved a number of times as the mine grew, and that the depth of the pit is taller than the Eiffel Tower. And there's illustrations of the image of the tower inside the pit on these on these signs, and that mining has recently proceeded underneath the pine, underneath the pit at a depth of 650 meters, so they've almost exhausted the usable asbestos around the pit and have now gone underground. But it didn't take very long while I was, while I was there to feel an overwhelming sadness. To think about the countless numbers of asbestos victims and people whose lives have been adversely affected by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tons of asbestos from the single mine alone. Or to realize the risk imposed on future generations regarding possible exposure to the asbestos that came from this mine. I went as a casual observer, <clears throat> but left more as a witness to a, a horrific crime. The group moved on to our next de destination, the Thetford Mines region of Quebec. It wasn't long before one soon saw the signs of the mining activity in the Thetford Mines area. Piles of asbestos waste tailings the size of mountains litters the landscape and completely surrounds the nearby townships which created an eerie, surreal feeling as we drove through along the roads. Roads which actually contained some of the, milings, the, the mine tailings as aggregate. The next image shows the proximity of the mine tailings to neighborhoods. In the Thetford Mines region actually contains about 26,000 people. Later, I noticed in this, this image a bar sign, a local establish, establishment which is called the Pits, perhaps having more than one meaning in this case. Pile after pile, or mountain after mountain. The region is actually a series of several asbestos mines and where they also mine other minerals, but for which generations of miners have spent the last 130 years creating these waste piles from multiple sites. This image shows white material that has eroded from the tailings pile. This is pure asbestos sediment that washes away from the pile into the environment. It is estimated that over 300 million tons of asbestos mining waste combined are in the Thetford Mines region. We made our way into town and stopped for lunch, but immediately stepping into the parking lot, it was noticed that what appeared to be ordinary gravel was actually asbestos waste tailings in the restaurant parking lot. Apparently, uses for the mine tailings included spreading it around amongst the people. Being a group of asbestos experts and professionals, out came the cameras, rubber gloves, and sample bags. We eventually ate lunch. And we proceeded to abandon historical asbestos mining sites, of which there are many in the area. And then on to the LAB Chrysotil Mine in nearby Black Lake, Quebec. At the time of this visit, the LAB Chrysotile Mine had the notorious distinction of being the last full-time operating asbestos mine in North America. Images from inside the mill show asbestos fiber recovery machines, bagging production, and asbestos storage warehouse. Each one of these pallets contains two metric tons, or roughly over 4,000 pounds each, each pallet. This was just a section of the, the warehouse. A mine representative indicated all of the bagged asbestos in the warehouse was already purchased 
and awaiting shipment to Asian markets. This image shows mining equipment inside the LAB Crisotel mine and shows some scale to the size of the mine. which is a, blow, a blown up portion of this view, a panoramic view of the same mine, the south portion of that mine. But I believe, however, since the summer of 2011, my understanding is that this mine has declared bankruptcy, but plans to reorganize and reopen. Could this finally be the end of asbestos mining in Canada? But before we point too many fingers, we also have our own messes to clean as well. How many people here knew or know that the U.S. has a long history of asbestos mining as well? Indeed, we do. There, are several, there were several active commercial asbestos mines across the country, those more notably in Arizona, here in California, and in this picture of Vermont, where this photo was taken. Two bottom images are historical photos that show bagging of the asbestos from the Vermont mine. The top right image shows Belvedere Mountain. It's located in northern Vermont. The bottom left is um, inside the mill where the fiber recovery machines are still open with material. This site got its start around the turn of the century, the 20th century, and ended production as recent as 1993. It is reported that this mine once had a peak output of tens of thousands of tons of asbestos per year, 94% of which was intended for domestic consumption, but still only amounted to 4% of the U.S.'s total annual asbestos demand at the time. The asbestos tailings at the site have been estimated to be up to 70 million tons and are eroding into the nearby surroundings. Currently, this site is being planned for cleanup by governmental groups. As an, as an inspector, the most common question I get from folks is, what does asbestos look like? Well, it can take on many forms and appear in thousands of different materials. But asbestos is actually a commercial term used to describe a group of six regulated fibrous minerals, chrysotil, amosite, chrysotilite, Tremolite, actinolite, and anthophilite, each represented here. Historically, the three most significant types were chrysotile, which was known as white asbestos, amosite, known as brown asbestos, which was named after a mining locality called Asbestos Mines of South Africa, Amosa, and chrysotilite, which was known as blue asbestos. Once, once processed, these asbestos fibers are used in, in, as ingredients in thousands of products and materials and applications. Here are more examples of the processed asbestos products. These were products that were found on inspections in laboratories. On the far left is a sample that was handed out to visitors when, at the um, asbestos mines in Quebec. Um, in the 1960s. This material is an asbestos filtered cigarette. Known as the Kent Micronite filter is probably the most tragic example of asbestos use that I can think of. In 1952 to 1956, cigarette manufacturer created a filter for a brand called Kent with the Micronite filter, the proprietary name. One publicized study found that hundreds of thousands of asbestos structures were released in only two puffs of the cigarette filter. This image shows the filter being dissected. And as you can see, it takes on a bluish gray coloration. And you can, in the tweezers are a single bundle of uh, chrysotilite. Let's pull out. This is a small uh, package of the cigarettes, as you can see, um, blue coloration in the, in the filter itself. That's a chrysotilite. On the left in this, this image is a pack of the cigarettes. 
on the right. It shows that after 1956, for some reasons that the company uh, wouldn't disclose publicly, uh, they removed the asbestos, but still, they still marketed the Micronite filter. But you can see a difference on the far left and the right image is the 1954 Kent Micronite. In the middle is a 1957 Kent Micronite without asbestos, but they kept the blue dye coloration in there so customers wouldn't notice a distinct difference. And then the far left is a 1959 Kent Micronite, non-asbestos. This image is of a product, another product that I've acquired is uh, the carousel dish towels made with 20% asbestos. On the back, it shows a patent number. I looked it up, and it describes all the reasons why they use asbestos in this product. And apparently, the novelty of this item was that chrysotile absorbs more water, and it was a, more of a novelty for, for the fabric that it could claim that when you dry your dishes with this towel, that it would absorb more, more water. And the chrysotile breaks down and acts as an, as an abradant and would polish your, polish your dishes in, in China. This is a small pamphlet from inside the, this, uh, this product. States the towels are easily laundered and have a cool feel characteristic of fabrics containing asbestos. Asbestos fireproof snow. Uh, decoration. This particular product um, has directions on the side to sprinkle throughout the house on Christmas tree limbs, on Christmas decorations, and in particular this, this product was tested and found to be um, almost pure amosite with mica mixed in as a, a glittery agent. And to me, when it says pure white, I, I don't, you know, it's the least of the uh, issues with this, but it's amosite, and it look, doesn't look like snow, it looks like pure amosite to me, but. Was this a possible source of non-occupational exposure for some? Here are more products of asbestos, the snow. Even children were indoctrinated into asbestos usage by using propaganda tools, such as this school exhibit of asbestos products produced by the, for the former Keesby Madison Company. Their slogan proclaimed best in asbestos. Zonalite attic insulation. Sometimes asbestos wasn't intentionally used in the product, but was there from natural sources in the, in the geology of the site. This is an air sample under PCM of a 15-minute sample from a contractor removing zonalite material from the attic. Only 15 minutes. After a while, uh, Canadian manufacturers stopped using the word asbestos and used chrysotile instead as a, as a way of trying to get around the, the uh, negativity of asbestos. But it, chrysotile actually means asbestos. As an inspector, I believe asbestos, <clears throat> as an asbestos inspector, there are critical, there's a critical reliance to locate materials and products and is an important component that contributes to asbestos awareness and prevention. The era of asbestos may be nearly forgotten, but millions of tons of asbestos materials still remain and must be managed for generations to come. Awareness is key to prevention. Thank you. Keep up the good work. I look forward to the day when ADAO is no longer needed. Fix it. Fix it. Everything in the world can be fixed.